God wants us to have a map, the Word of God, to show me where I am, to show me where I am in my life. Some people, they're in, a, in an intersection of their life and never been here before. They need God's Word as a map to show you where you are. Let me show you, if you're a young person who's about to leave for college, this is what you need to do in life. If you're a person who's just been married, if you're a, a husband, a wife, you're like, what do I do now? This is brand new, what do I do? God's Word will show you what to do. And some people grew up knowing those things and reading those things, but they couldn't give you advice about it because they've never experienced it. Some people have experienced it and got hit by the truck and they don't know what the map says, so they can't help you. But if you know what the map says, and you've been there, You've walked it out. You have understanding. You have this experience. Now you can become a valuable teacher to tell somebody, don't go that way to the woman's house. Don't even do that. My son, if sinners entice you, consent thou not. I memorized that as a boy. But as a grown man, you learn. If sinners entice you, you don't have to join with them where they go. And I want more and more of us to learn God's word and know what the map says. And as we walk with God, he'll say, this is that. This is how you be a great husband. This is how you be a great wife. This is how you be a leader. This is how you be a child. Because without the map, we're lost.
We're concluding our series today on Paradise Island. Paradise Island obviously is a fictitious place, an analogy, an allegory maybe, of the Word of God. And I hope that you live your life as Jesus said, if any man will hear my words and do them, he shall be like a man that's built his house on a rock. And the rain and the winds will blow and the storm will come and his house will not be destroyed. Your life is safe and secure. If you build it on the word of God, it is an island. We were, just to quickly recap where we've gone in our series, we all got in the airplane and Isaiah was taking us to Nigeria. We had a, we had a vacation plan. Did not go as planned because that airplane crash landed in the middle of the ocean. And uh, so there was a group of us who were the first wave of people who were on this airplane that crashed. And we got our raft and we swam and we pedaled until we came across an island in the middle of nowhere. That island was able to sustain life. And when we washed up on the shores of that island, we knew that we were uh, safe. It recovered us. It turned us around. And uh, Isaiah was there. A raft was also there. And Arath began to um, walk around the island. He discovered some things. He got his scuba gear on and he swam down. And he, what he figured out the further that he went was that this island was actually uh, on a book. The, the book is the word of God. This island, the word of God is Paradise Island. And so the, our series has been entitled Living on God's Word. I hope that you're living your life on God's Word. I hope that you are depending on God's Word. When you have a need, that's where you go. When you don't know what to do, that's what you do. And the Word of God we talked about is a rock. It's not going anywhere. It was here long before any of us got here. The Word of God will be here long after every nation has crumbled and every, every civilization is gone. Forever, O oh Lord, thy Word is settled in heaven and earth. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. If you've got God's Word there in your hand, on your lap, you've got that which is more eternal than the universe itself. The Word of God is a rock. We talked about the depth of the Word of God, how deep it goes. It goes to the depths of human depravity, the depths of God's wisdom, heavenly wisdom. And uh, then we talked about the life that's teeming at the bottom of this uh, place where the Word of God is, that the Word of God is full of riches. If you have the Word of God, you have something that's better than silver or gold, yea, than much fine gold, the Bible says. And the Word of God, as Arath discovered as well, is a waterfall. And we found Brett in the sand, face down, and we washed him off, and we, uh, we salvaged Brett, and we washed him off and washed him out at the waterfall. The word of God is a waterfall. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. You can, you can clean your life up. By the way, we don't clean our life up and then we come to God. We come to God just as we are. He cleans us up. He takes us to the waterfall. He washes our life. He washes the past mistakes. He washes the stain of guilt. He washes the, all of that away. And the word of God, then the word of God flows into us and flows through us. And we become conduits of that which is already behind us and can go in front of us, allows us to pour into other people. Men and women should be pouring into the next generation the things of the word of God. Uh, because if you bring, if you take in but never give out, you become stagnant like the Dead Sea. If you give out but never take in, you become empty and you run out. And so let the Word of God flow into you. Let the Word of God flow out of you and God will do great things in your life. And then Karina became the cook because we found food. We found some pineapples. We found the coconuts. And uh, by the time she was done, the spread, uh, we were not just surviving on the island. Uh, we were thriving, and the word of God is not, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. If you have the word of God, that is something that your soul eats, not just to survive in this world, because there's nothing really to eat in this world for our soul. The word of God is what gives us what we need to be as healthy as we can possibly be. We talked about uh, the craving of the word of God, the carving of the word of God, learn how to cut it up. 
Then the chewing of the word of God, the consuming of the word of God. I hope you know what it is to meditate, to, to read something and think about it. The more you think about it, the more you break down the cell walls and get the nutrition out of that. And we talked about the, the five ways that we can break down the nutrition to get things out of the word of God last week. You can go and watch the YouTube video if you forgot. Uh, and then as we were living, as we had our community, we were now we were having fun at the waterfall, we were diving down, we were throwing little projectiles and bringing fish, and we were cooking. We were living our life to the fullest. We figured out something. This island is so good. We are here on this island. What this island has actually is what the mainland needs. This is what everybody else needs. But how do we get back to the mainland? And so it was Anthony that actually was in the cave one time. And Anthony, he was had his, his iPhone, which still had not run out yet, um, <laughs> and his light. He came across the strangest thing, a scroll that was rolled up inside of the cave. And he discovered the map. And the map showed the detail of this island and its surrounding topography the more we all discovered this map, the more we searched it and looked at it, we figured out this island, this island has had this map that was able to show us where it is in the ocean, where it is in the world, and how to get back to the mainland. But the thing we figured out at this point is we're not trying to get back to the mainland because that's where we really want to go and live again. We want to get back to the mainland because we want the mainland to know where this island is. Because the word of God has all the best food. The word of God has all the best beaches. It has all the best waterfalls. The word of God is the place that we want other people to come and live. And so the map shows us where we are, shows us how to get back home, and then how to take home and show them uh, how to find the island itself. So let's read Psalm 119, verse 105. Psalm 119, verse 105. God's word is a map. Let's read that together. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let's all say that together, shall we? Thy word, ready? Psalm 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let's read that one more time. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let's pray together. Father, we come before you today asking for your help, that you would speak to us about how important it is that your word be in our lives, how important it is that we know who we are, we get that from the word of God, that we know where we are, we get that from the word of God, that we know where we're going, we get that from the word of God, and we know how to get there. We also get that from your word. Lord, I pray that you would speak very clearly, very powerfully to each soul that is here, each heart that is present. Bless these that are here with a special blessing from heaven. I pray that you would talk to us in ways that our hearts cannot mistake. Talk to us in ways that are impossible to forget. Be unforgettable to us, Father, today, we ask. I pray that you would help me as I speak, that you would give me the filling, the anointing of the Spirit of God. Cleanse me of sin. Empty me of myself. And Lord, I pray that you fill me up with you and teach me what I should say. Please keep me back from saying what I should not say. And we'll be careful to give you the praise in advance of what you're going to do in this hour. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Back in those days, the Jewish culture, they didn't have flashlights. They didn't have iPhones. We have come up with so many things in our technology. But they had a little piece of technology that they came up with which was a little bit primitive, but it did the job. Here's what they did. Whenever they'd go out into the night, and when it got dark, it was time to power down. That's not when the that's not when the day actually started for them. That's when they're like, okay, it's dark outside. We're gonna we're gonna power down. We're gonna. So they got a good night's rest every night. But in case you needed to go out in the dark, in case you needed to go out in the black of night, and in case you were carrying something, they came up with a little contraption that they would actually light a candle, and they put something on their foot, and on that something on their foot, there was a little candlestick, and they would stick that candle right on their toe. 
They would put a candle on their foot and it would be able to show them where they were going. Thy word <coughs> is a lamp unto my feet. And this is the illustration that David is speaking of that, that they had. They needed a lamp to their feet because in the darkness, you don't know where you're going. Jesus said, he that walketh in the darkness stumbles. He doesn't even know at what he stumbles. Many people in our world today are in darkness. And that darkness creates a cloak and their knowledge is taken away and so they are lost. How many have ever been lost before? Raise your hand. Men, I know as you drive, you know, no, I've never been lost. No, we've been. And if you, honey, stop and ask for the direction. What do you mean? I'm not lost. But if you don't know exactly where you're going and exactly where you are and exactly how to get there, you are lost. And so we need a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let me show you how God's word works because this is really important. This is not our message today. But if you want to know what's way down the pathway down there, you got to get your lamp. You got to put it on your foot and your foot lamp will show you. If you've ever had a candle, you have it close to the ground, it creates a little radius and you can see something, but it's not a big radius. It just shows you enough to take your next step. And so you take that step and it's safe. There's no snakes, there's no crocodiles, there's no, uh, there's no dinosaurs. We're on this island, there's some crazy stuff that could be there. In order to know what the next step is required, you have to take the next step. And that lamp to your feet will illuminate your pathway Again, but only enough to take the next step. If you want to know what's way, way down the pathway, you got to put that lamp on your feet and walk step by step down that pathway. By the time you get down there, you will know what's down there. So many people in their Christian life say, Lord, tell me what's going to happen in 10 years. God's like, no. If you knew, you would be petrified. If you knew what's in store for 10 years from now, you would quit. But by the time you get down that pathway... You are stronger in your faith. You're wiser. You're able. And now whatever's down there waiting for you, you are able to handle it. And so God says, I'm going to show you day by day everything you need to know, but I'm going to show you what you need for today. Give us this day our daily bread. Do you live your life for today? So many people want to know the future. God says the, tomorrow is promised to no man. If by the time we need to know everything, we're not concentrating on the things that we need to do today, right now. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added unto you. Yeah, but Lord, what about when I need to get down there? The things that I need, will, will they be there? Yes. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, all these things will be added unto you. And then he said, take no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow will take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. There's enough trouble in tomorrow that's going to keep you occupied by the time you get there tomorrow. But if you don't focus on what's going to happen today, you won't be right today. You won't handle what's in front of you today. Stop worrying about tomorrow because then you have to worry about today and tomorrow. Get through today and then that's done. And then tomorrow, God said, I'll give you the grace for what you need tomorrow. And you don't even know what to do. So the, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Because if you don't have that light, you are lost. How many are scared of the dark? Anybody scared of the dark in here? All right, I'm honest. Okay, you're on. Okay. Scared of the dark. How many have a nightlight in your house? All right. How many you are scared of the dark, don't have a nightlight, so you just live in, in fear and terror all night, every night? Okay. That's the way some people are when the lights go out. If the lights went out right now, if it just went, some of us in here would scream and run. But you don't know where you're running. I'm afraid of the dark and I'm running. So now we're tripping over each other and falling. It's such an amazing thing to have light. To have, our, to have our pathway. And so then, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Do you know the pathway that you're on? Do you know the direction that your life is headed? Do you know where you are headed? You will end up where, where you are headed. You said, well, Pastor David, you just said that there's a direction and I don't even know what's way down there. But here's the thing. If God is in your life, he will walk with you and here's what he does. Hey, I'm right here. Walk towards me. And you take that step towards you, and you see what's there. And then you listen for his voice. You listen for his word. God will speak to you. I'm right here. Come 
And as you walk towards him, God in the darkness, speaking out of the darkness, giving us the light to see what I need to see today, I take that step, and I don't know which way to go. He, he will speak to me tomorrow and the next day and the next day, because without God, we are lost. How many know how to read a map? How to read a map? By map, I don't mean map. I mean old school map. I mean the Atlas, the trucker map. That thing that you had to buy at the gas station, and when you opened it, it was that big. And if you're the driver, you're like, get that thing out of my way. And if you're the navigator, you're like, well, I can't see where we're going. I have to see. And it's so tiny, you have to have a magnifying glass and think from here. Year after year after year, our family would drive cross country from San Francisco uh, to South Carolina and Mississippi. And so my mom and dad would have the Atlas map. And so as a boy, I would just flip through. And this state and Nevada and Colorado, I'm, I'm just learning. I'm a geography buff. I love geography. I love knowing where things are. But if you know how to read a map, that only gives you a part of the information. There's a map understanding, and then there's a farmer understanding. You know what the farmer understanding is? What you do is you go on down and you see that red barn. <laughs> then you turn right at the red barn. Uh, come about, you know, three or four cow lengths. And uh, then that's, that's experience, and then there's the map. And I wanna, I'm going to jump in my message a little bit because we're going to run. Let's read these verses really quickly about the Word of God. Psalm 19, verse 8, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, watch this, enlightening the eyes. God's word will show your eyes what you need to see in your life so you know where you're going. Psalm 43, verse 3, oh, send out thy light and thy truth. The truth is God's word. Let them lead me, let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. Then will I go out unto the altar of God, unto God my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O God my God. David said, send out your light and truth. Let them lead me so I know where to go. And when I get there, I'll be at your tabernacle. God's word will lead you to his presence. God's word will lead you back home. And that is the place where you rejoice. That is the place of joy and praise and thanksgiving. And then this last verse is great. Proverbs 6, verse 20. If you, if you know Proverbs 6, this is, a great, um, this is a great word. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart. Tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. The word of God will lead you. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. When thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. And what is this talking about? Some people think this is talking about their iPhone. Oh, I need something to lead me and guide me. I got my ways app. I know where I'm going. Oh, I need something to keep me at night. Ah, oh, man, I'm so afraid. I'll turn on my music. Oh, my sleep app. Oh, I get my waves or, or the birds. And some, oh, man, it keeps me at night. When thou wakest. It shall talk with thee. What's the first thing some people reach for in the morning? It's their phone. Last thing they put down at night, their phone. The thing that when they need to know what to do, hey Google, or hey Siri, or whatever you say. If you don't know, your phone knows. We have replaced God's word with our phone. We have replaced God's word in all that it does for us. And then it says, for the commandment. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Listen with us. God's word is a map. It shows us where to go. And this is what I wanted to get to. There's three words that Proverbs talks about. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Are they the same thing? Yes and no. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. As you read the book of Proverbs, you'll come across, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So knowledge is something. Wisdom is something. And so let's break these down and we'll talk about how they, how they talk to each other. Knowledge is the ability to understand the world and oneself as created by God based on personal experience and the skills that God provides. The Hebrew word for the knowledge is yada, Y-A-D-A, yada, which means to know by experience. Knowledge is what the farmer tells you. Oh, you go on down to that red barn and you turn right. Then you go about three or four furlongs. 
uh, you know, they, however they measure things. He knows where it is because he's been there. That's knowledge. That's wisdom. That's by experience. You know something by experience. There's a lot of things we have knowledge of. Wisdom is the ability to apply knowledge successfully and skillfully with good judgment and discernment. Wisdom is the ability to learn from the past experiences and avoid making the same mistakes. To make skillful decisions in life. That's wisdom. Some people just have wisdom. You go to them and they're like, oh, I, I can tell you what to do here because I've been here before. And they can, they can take the knowledge of life to make right decisions in life. Some people have knowledge, but they don't apply it and have wisdom. Knowledge is like if you've ever been somewhere. You've been there. How many have ever been somewhere? Yeah, Pastor Dave, where are you going? So you're there, and there's a lake. You're like, oh, there's a lake. And there's a building and a tree and a red barn. There's a, there's a fork in the road. You're like, okay. Some people grew up, and everywhere you go, you go based on knowledge. We call this autopilot. You go, I grew up in San Francisco, and I never knew a map of San Francisco, but I knew where things were because I would go around. I knew where things were. Then later... I got a map of San Francisco, and I was like, this is fascinating, this map of San Francisco, because I, I, I just love being able to see the big picture, the bird's eye view. Wisdom is having the big picture, the bird's eye view. But watch this. Understanding is intelligence, discretion, reasoning skill, and you have a handle and grasp on the big picture of life. So the word intelligence is a part of it. That you have an overall knowledge of everything comprehensively. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. They're not exactly the same thing. So, if you grow up in a place and you're like, oh, this is where the Blockbuster video is. There's no Blockbusters anymore, but go with me. This is where the Blockbuster video is. I, I know the Blockbuster video. I know it because uh, you walk until your knee hurts. And so that's how far, and, and so then there's a thrifty ice cream there, and you get the ice cream, oh man. But you grow up like that as a kid. You grow up knowing where things are. Then you come across a map, and you learn how to read a map, and you say, oh wow, that's incredible. Now some people have a map of a place they've never been to. How many have that? You have a map of a place they've never been to? I've seen a map of Paris, and I love how Paris is. is. I've seen a map of Rome, but I've never been to Rome. There are certain places in the world I've been to but never seen a map of. There are certain places in the world I've seen a map of but I've never been to. So I have partial knowledge of one or partial knowledge of another one. But have you ever experienced that click? I moved here to Frisco and I became a pool guy. I'm a pool guy on the side and I can drive around. I know where this is. I know where that is since I follow my iPhone. If you're on your iPhone, you don't learn a place oftentimes. Okay, so turn right, turn left, and so okay. But after a while, if your iPhone died, oh no, where am I? Oh no, you have a map, but you don't know where you are. Some people have a map of life, they don't know where they are. They have a Bible, but they don't know where they are in their life. So knowing where you are in your life is knowledge. Knowing what the map says is wisdom. But sometimes, and I remember when it clicked for me, here in Frisco, when I was at the gates of Prosper, and there's a Chili's, there's a Chick-fil-A, I was at the Gates of Prosper, and I was like, that's where the Chili's is. I saw it on the map. Oh, it all makes sense now. Now I have the ability to drop the map, and I can be on autopilot. Now I'm going around in places in Frisco, I'm like, hey, how did you even get here? Oh, I don't know, I was here on autopilot. I know where I am, I know where I'm going, but I was actually supposed to go back and get that at the grocery store. And whenever you do certain things on autopilot, you have this understanding of the map, you have this understanding of the location, but when it fuses together, now you can teach somebody where they're going. You can say, oh, right here on the map. Oh, and let me also tell you, when you get there, there's gonna be a red barn there. Uh, so follow the map, and I will also tell you what to expect, so that when you get there, and the map says you're there, and you remember what I told you, you will have a complete understanding. Now I understand where I am. And I can tell you this, I understand the city of Frisco now. I've lived here for almost two years. I understand where I am on a map, and when I'm there, I know what's there. That is how you know you really live somewhere. 
when you really know the map and you know the location. That is understanding. This is the way life works. The Word of God is our map. And sometimes people have the Word of God and they never look at the map. They, they're, they're, they're somewhere, but they don't know where they are. They've never seen it on the map. Some people know the map really well, but they've never been there. They can't give you advice about it. They've read about it. They've heard about it. But they can't give you real advice about it because they've never been there. What God wants from all of us in our Christian life is to know where I, he wants me to know where I am. He wants me to know where I am in relation to the world and to be able to help people and show people because now I don't have just knowledge. I don't just have wisdom. I have understanding. I understand this part of life. I understand. Let me show you where this happened in the Bible one time. The Bible is a map and some people have been there. Okay, I didn't put in, I didn't put in the notes. Turn the Bibles to the book of Acts. Acts Chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. This is fascinating. The day of Pentecost fully came. Mighty rushing wind. Flames of fire, tongues of fire are hovering above all the disciples. And the day of Pentecost is here. They start speaking in tongues. They start preaching the gospel in all these languages. It lists 13 languages that people were listening to. And all these people start believing on Jesus Christ. Because he's dead and he's buried and he's risen again and he's ascended and he has given the Holy Spirit and the church is now completely kicked off. And all the people of the of the land are like, what is happening? These people are preaching in other tongues. They must be drunk. That's, this is crazy. They must be drunk. What is happening? And Peter steps up and in Acts chapter 2 and verse 15, it says... For these are not drunken as ye suppose. Peter says, these are not drunken as ye suppose. Seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Anybody trying to get drunk this early in the day? We got stuff to do. Verse 16. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And here's the prophecy. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is speaking of a double prophecy, a double fulfillment, but it began to be fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. Joel chapter 2 is where this is being quoted from. And Joel chapter 2, it says, And in those days I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your, monk, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. And it goes on to say, And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There were people who knew the scriptures. They knew the map. They knew, oh, there's a day coming. I think, and it's prophesied. The God will pour out the spirit upon all flesh. The sons will prophesy. The daughters will, the old men shall dream dreams. They will see visions. The sun will be turned to, to black. And the moon will return into blood. That great and terrible day of the Lord. They knew the map. They knew it. They had seen it. They had looked at it. Now they were standing in the day. And they're like, what is going on here? We know what this is. We know what that says. But Peter says, whoa, 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 whoa. This is that. We're at the intersection. We're at the thrifty. You've seen it on the map. Now you're standing here. You need to know that what you're looking at is what you saw on the map. And this happens in the Bible. It's an amazing thing that happens when you read and God says, look out for this in your life. And you actually get there and it's like, bang, like, whoa, what was that? That was what God was warning me about. That was what God was telling me about. And when you put that knowledge of the word of God together with the experience of having walked it in life, now you have understanding because the word of God is a map and the voice of the Holy Spirit is the one that says, this is that. You are where you read about. There's some things I read about as a boy that I was like, I don't know what that is. That's crazy. What, what is? And then you become a man, you're an adult, and it actually happened. You're like, what is this? And the Holy Spirit says, this is that. This is what you saw on the map. You're standing here now. And if you know that, 
Now you're able to take the power of the word of God. You're able to take the principles of the word of God. You're able to take the promises of the word of God. Things you saw on the map. And you can apply them where you are. And you can avoid the temptations. You don't have to get hit by the truck. If you're somewhere where you don't even know where you are. Then anything can happen. God wants us to have a map. The word of God to show me where I am. To show me where I am in my life. Some people, they're in, a, in an intersection of their life. They've never been here before. They need God's word as a map to show you where you are. Let me show you. If you're a young person who's about to leave for college, this is what you need to do in life. If you're a person who's just been married, if you're a, a husband, a wife, I'm like, what do I do now? This is brand new. What do I do? God's word will show you what to do. And some people grew up knowing those things and reading those things, but they couldn't give you advice about it because they've never experienced it. Some people have experienced it and got hit by the truck, and they don't know what the map says, so they can't help you. But if you know what the map says, and you've been there, and you've walked it out, you have understanding, you have this experience, now you can become a valuable teacher to tell somebody, don't go that way to the woman's house. Pass by it. Avoid it. Don't even come near it because her house is the way to hell. The steps going down to the abyss. Don't even do that. My son, if sinners entice you, consent thou not. I, I memorized that as a boy. But as a grown man, you learn. If sinners entice you, don't consent. Don't give in. You don't have to join with them where they go. And I want more and more of us to learn God's word and know what the map says. And as we walk with God, he'll say, this is that. This is how you be a great husband. This is how you be a great wife. This is how you be a leader. This is how you be a child. And so, so many of those things, the word of God is a map. Because without the map, we're lost. Sometimes in my life, I've been lost. I remember when I graduated from high school, I was lost. I was, I was a believer. I wasn't lost spiritually. There was a day I was lost spiritually. I was nine years old. I'm tossing and turning in my bed every night. If I die tonight, I don't know if I'm going to heaven. I don't know because I had never put my faith in Jesus and received that free gift of salvation. I was lost. And the word of God was the lamp that showed me exactly. When it shows you you're lost and it shows you the pathway, how to be found, Jesus says, I am the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And the word of God is the light that shows us that path. You walk down, you, you meet Jesus you become a believer, and now you're not lost. But in life, sometimes we get lost. We, we know where we are, and then the lights go out, and we're lost. We know where we are, and then the curtain falls, and we're lost, because we don't know what our next step is. We don't know what the future holds. And being lost creates an amazing amount of trepidation for some people. It creates an amazing amount of fear and anxiety. What's my next step? I have to take a step, but I don't know what to do. Have you ever been there? It feels like life is pushing me. Life is making me go faster than I want to go. And I don't know what to do. I don't want to do the wrong thing. And then I, I just do something and hope it was the, for the best. Don't raise your hand, but how many have ever been lost and not know what to do, but had to do something? And so you did something, and it ended up being the wrong thing because you didn't read the map. You didn't listen to somebody who had been there before and said, don't do that. Don't go that way. And so we are lost. In my ministry, there's been times. In my marriage, there's been times that I was lost. We planted a church in 2007 in Dublin, California. We just knew God had led us to California, and he did. And God brought a family along with us, and it was incredible. And we were serving, and we were you know, doing the best we could with who we were. And our church stayed very small. Our church stayed very small. And six years passed, and we were... You know, trying to reach people and trying to share the gospel with people, trying to serve people. And our church continued to stay small, and we just couldn't figure out what was happening. And eventually, our heart, God sort of turned my heart off to the area. I heard a man uh, talking about how God led him away from an area, and that his experience was that God moved his heart away from the area. <coughs> and I was, I was like, yeah, but what do I do next? What now? I was lost. Have you ever been lost? And so for the next six months, we, the hardest decision I've ever made in my entire life was to leave that church. And that church, the people went to other churches, that church closed doors. Hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. Completely lost. Lord, tell me what to do. Completely in the dark. 
And my wife's mom and dad said, well, you can come and, and stay with us while you figure out your next step. So for the next six months, we came and stayed with them and prayed every day and read the word of God every day and listened for the voice of God every day. Have you ever been there where you're like, I, I got the map, Lord. I'm, I'm right here. You see me right here where I am. Tell me what to do. And you don't feel like you hear the voice. It's so hard when you feel lost and nothing is speaking. And then after time passed, a door opened up. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. Sometimes you have to ask yourself, how do you hear from God? How do you discern the voice of God? How do you know it's God talking? I know what the map says, but do I belong there? If I go that way, is that where God will bless? Is that what God is opening? So sometimes you have to listen to not only the word of God, you read the word of God, you know the principles, you definitely avoid sinful things. You avoid things that you know are wrong. But what do you do when there's three things that are right? Which one do you pick? So sometimes not only the word of God, but you go to other godly counselors and you listen to the counsel of other people. And you just tell them, hey, what would you do in a situation like this? Don't tell them what you're thinking about doing. Just ask them, give them your Give them your thoughts, give them your, uh, your options, and then ask their wisdom. Because sometimes the Bible says, counsel in the heart of man is like a deep well, but a man of understanding will draw it out. And so the word of God and godly counsel, sometimes then you listen for circumstances that align. Sometimes those circumstances of life are the thing that lightens your path. David said, God will enlighten my darkness. And so we felt lost. And God led us. To California, my brother's a pastor in Southern California, and we teamed up with him. and was a new pastor with him for four years, and uh, was had a great time. Um, and so my brother and I, twin brother, were very close. It was a great time we had there. But we knew that was not the permanent place that God wanted us to be. So we knew where we were, but we just didn't know what the next place was. So we were sort of unlost but lost at the same time. Have you ever been there? Unlost and lost at the same time. I know what I'm doing, but what's the next thing? Because God, I know I have to do the next thing. And to be lost, you've got to stay close to the map and you've got to keep listening for God's voice. And tosses and turns. Four years there, and then we went to Charlotte, North Carolina for four years. And that was a place of hard things, difficult things. Because whenever you feel lost, and because here's the hardest thing, is that God was blessing our ministry greatly in Charlotte, North Carolina. God was blessing our lives in, in amazing ways, but we're like, still, this is, this is good. But this is definitely not what we're supposed to be long term. And we knew that before going there. This is not the long term. It's hard to follow God when you don't know all of the things that you want to know. But I can tell you this. God will always lead his people if they keep their eyes on him and they keep their eyes on the man. God led us here two years ago to Frisco, Texas. And we love Frisco, Texas. Here's our prayer. We tell God, Lord, this is the place where we feel you have us for the rest of our lives and we're going to put our roots down. And God, God gave us that, that hold that you're, you are where I want you. But before that, I can tell you of so many things in our marriage, so many things in our ministry, so many things in my personal life, being in the dark, not knowing what to do next. But God who knows what to do next says, I've got a map. The word of God is our map to get back home. If you feel lost in your purpose and don't know what to do next, the word of God is your map to show you where you are and to show you the big picture to show you where he is to make your way to him. If you're lost, it, it might be that things in, in this life that have stolen the, the things that you know what it is. It could be that uh, the loss of a spouse, being a widow or a widower, or a divorce or a separation, the loss of a relationship, something happens and you're like, I'm, I feel lost. What do I do now? What do I do next? As a parent, as a, as, as a child, the next step of life oftentimes doesn't say it. And I can tell you this. Sometimes God will turn the lights off. What does a baby do when the lights go off? It reaches up and says, Mama! 
But you often don't see them running. They stay where they are and they just reach up and say, Mama, Daddy, Dada, Abba. Sometimes God allows the lights to turn off. So we will stop and wait for him and cry out to him. Because sometimes we think we've got it all figured out and we're just going to forge forge ahead and we're getting further and further and further from God's will, further and further and further from where we're supposed to be, further from the island that we're supposed to be on, further from God's word. And so God will allow darkness to temporarily come in. I can't tell you how many times God has allowed darkness to envelop me, envelop my spirit to where I was like paralyzed. Okay, I don't even know. I'm not, I can't do anything because I don't know what to do. I don't know what the next thing is. Will God bless that? And my wife will tell you, I'm a person who doesn't like to, uh, the fear of doing something wrong, the fear of failure, what if I do it, it's the wrong thing. And I heard uh, a preacher say one time, uh, long ago, my greatest fear is not that I will uh, fail, but that I will succeed in something that doesn't matter for eternity. Succeed in something that doesn't mean a, a hill of beans. And so... I've always told God, I want you to just make sure that I'm doing exactly what you created me to do, made me to do, because then I know that you'll bless my life, that the people that, that, that I'm with, that will, my family, that, that God's blessing will fall on them. Maybe this is your experience sometimes. I feel lost. Lord, where am I? Who am I? Where are you? Which way do I go next? And if you walk with God long enough, you know that God takes detours. Life is not a straight path. And oftentimes the detours are the hardest things and the things that we find our greatest closeness to God is the detours, the tragedies, the, the things that come and wreck our life, the things that shake us to our core, where we feel lost all over again. And we're like, God, have you, maybe you messed up with me. Hey, he figured out everybody else. Like, maybe I'm not on God's radar. And I just want to tell you, if you know the map, if you know the maker of the map, he will lead you back. I heard a story of a preacher who was going to get in an airplane. And uh, he and another man and a pilot were going to be in this airplane. And the pilot said, here's the thing, before we take off, I need to tell you this. At about 15,000 feet, I tend to black out. And he said, huh? Say that again? He said, yeah, just so if something happens, just kind of wake me back up. <laughs> and he's like, oh, uh, what are we even getting this plane for? They take off. A little bitty plane. And there's a storm in the horizon. And they're getting, they're rising, they're rising, and here comes the storm. And sure enough, that pilot, blacked out at 15,000 feet. And the preacher's like, hey, hey, you know, are you there? Is everything okay? He just blacked out. Something happens in his body. And the storm is coming. And so he's looking at all the knobs and all the bells and whistles and he's like, I don't even know what's what. I don't know how high am I. And so he gets on that little microphone and says, Hello? Anybody there? And sure enough, there was a voice that came over the airwaves. And that voice said, hey, are you a small airplane headed for blah, blah, blah? And he said, I think so. Where am I? And the voice said this, you're coming up on a storm. Listen very carefully to everything I tell you. And do exactly what I tell you. And I will bring you down safe and sound. So sure enough, that voice talked. And he said, look at this knob. Push this button. Look at this. Tell me what the number says. Look at this. And he taught him how to fly the plane while he was behind. This guy, every now and then he would say, hey, wake up. Nothing. He's figured out, I'm going to have to land this plane. I'm going to have to get through the storm. He said, I need you to go higher. I need you to go higher. I need you to, don't worry about the storm. Don't worry about the lightning. Listen to my voice and do exactly what I say. And sure enough, he got through the storm and he said, I'll tell you where you are. You are so many miles from where we are. 
and I'm going to turn you and I'm going to land you here at this airport. And he followed little by little and they got closer and closer. He's like, okay, so I'm not going to land this plane. What do I do? He's got really, really scared. He's like, don't worry. I'll tell you exactly what to do to land the plane. And as it got closer and closer, he told him, you dip down, you, you pull back, you do everything. And as they were coming in, doo, 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 and he landed the plane and the pilot woke up. And he's like, where have you been? And he, so he had to stay in a hotel. He went back to his hotel. He was so frazzled. He fell back on the bed and passed out. And that night, around midnight, a knock came at the door. And he went and he answered the door. And he said, hello. And the guy said, are you brother so-and-so? And he's like, I am. He said, I recognize your voice. You are the voice. He's like, yes, I am the voice. He said, I came, I wanted to meet you. I just want to tell you, you did a great job because you listened to the voice. And he's alive and well today, and everybody in that plane is in one piece. He made it all the way home because he listened to the voice. This life is full of storms. There may be somebody here in a storm right now. Maybe somebody you can see a storm on the horizon. Or maybe it's just the black darkness of night that is creating this, I'm lost, I don't even know where I am, am I in danger? God's word is the map. But the map is great. But listen to the voice. Because God will tell you, this is that. I'll tell you where you are in your life. I'll tell you what to do next. And if you listen to God, he will bring you all the way in. You know what home is? Home is heaven. Home is heaven when we're done. When we get to heaven, we're going to see him face to face. We're going to hear the voice. We're going to be in God's presence, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And I can't tell you what that's going to mean to me and to all of us. There's some people like, yeah, boy, just leave me here a little bit longer. Look, I'm, I love God. I'm, re I'm ready. I'm, God, leave me here. And, and uh, my wife and I raise a family. But there's nothing better than being in the presence of the voice, the one who created us, the one who wrote the map, the one who guides us all the way through in life. Can I encourage you? Don't live life by yourself. Don't live life in the blind. If a storm comes, don't take the wheel and just figure it out. Listen to the voice because the word of God will show you the lamp unto your feet. He will show you what to do next. He said, but what happens when I get the... No, no, no. Just do the last thing he told you to do. And you'll get the instructions for the next thing to do. That's the way life works. But why can't I have more? Not the way it works. Because God knows if we knew everything, we wouldn't need him anymore. We wouldn't look to him. We wouldn't look. I got it all figured out. God allows us to not have it all figured out. So we stay close to be there for you. But stay close. Get a hold of the map. Get a hold of God's word. It has everything you'll need. If it's a loss of a relationship, God can guide you back home from there. If it's a prodigal son, if you are a prodigal, God can guide you back home. If you just keep your eyes open, if you keep a hold of the map. Whatever you're facing in life, whatever the storm is, whatever the difficulty is, whatever the temptation is, God will bring you back. But you have to listen to the voice. Father, today we thank you that without you, we can do nothing. We thank you that. We thank you for that because... I can't tell you how many times if I could try it in my own strength and figure it out, I would leave you behind and try to do life on my own and not worry about you. But Lord, I thank you for the times that you allow the feeling of being lost, the feeling of darkness, the feeling of uncertainty, the feeling of the unknown, because then we cling to you. Then we need you. Father, I pray for somebody in here today that is lost. Don't know where they are. Don't know where they're going. Don't know how to get there. We thank you that you're able to give us not just knowledge, not just wisdom, but understanding to see the big picture of life, to know where we are and what is here. 